So, this is uh, quite exciting. Um, I never thought I'd see this, actually. Um, this is my documentary, Vipco, The Untold Story, a DVD release of just the documentary. It's not an extra or bulked onto anything. This is actually purely Vipco. Um, it's a own glorious DVD, which actually, if you notice, it does actually say VHS Godfather, the Vipco story. Um, that's nothing to do with me. That's a title change from the distributor. It's my documentary, Vipco, The Untold Story, which was a title I came up with and, and had. I'm used to this 20 years of making films. I'm used to distributors changing my, um, changing the titles to my films. It happens an awful lot. Uh, it, it, it's quite confusing out there now with the some of the films I've made and what they're known as. But um, yeah, this is VHS Godfather, the Vipco story, which is AKA Vipco, the untold story. Uh, it's just nice to have, for it to have this um, release for the collection really, because uh, this was quite a journey for me. Um, it was a passion project. Uh, I, I was actually, um, I was stuck in a rut. I, I was making independent films. I was quite frustrated. There's a lot of filmmakers and indie filmmakers, especially are like I'd, I'd had a, a rough run of films, struggling to get them out there, um, questioning why I'm a filmmaker. It was causing me more pain than happiness at points. It had put a big strain on uh, life and at the time relationships and finances and. Um, I was doing some soul destroying jobs, which weren't too bad, but as in it, they were film jobs, filming and editing videography, uh, wasn't exactly the things I wanted to be filming and where I wanted to be. And I was sat on a bit of a break on one of these shoots. And I was, you know, just thinking of the past several years of, of my film journey. And I remember my meetings with Michael Lee. So way back in 2000 and it would have been 2005 it initially started. Uh, I made a I, I made a short film in 2004. I finished editing it in 2005 and I showed Michael Lee. I got hold of Michael Lee from Vipco. Uh, Vipco was still going at this point. They had their DVD screen time collection out which I was a huge collector of and again that was one of the first labels that I really collected to me and and, and was a, like you know an actual collection and a, and a boutique which has led on to me collecting many other things such as Arrow and Second Sight and AEA and Eureka and, and, and uh, there's, there's loads of them now. Um, uh, <laughs> my wallet don't thank me. But um, so Michael Lee was actually interested in meeting me to discuss this zombie film I'd made. It was actually called Zombie Village. It was a 40 minute film, really awkward length, wasn't feature, wasn't really a short. And I had some interesting meetings with him where he actually um, was interested in um, releasing a zombie film if I made one and, and help and support me. Uh, I was a similar age to his son and um, I reminded him of him and I had a few quite cool uh, lunches with him and, and it set me off to make a zombie film. And I come up with an idea of a, a real in your face, sexually transmitted disease zombie film. So, you know, it was not just the metaphor that's used in others. It was really kind of going to be more in your face. Michael loved that. I was actually walking my dog one day. I've probably told this story many times. I know I have, uh, but he rang me up. Um, it was quite crazy seeing like Vipco ringing me. And he wanted to tell me that, can I get a zombie cock in the film which you know i i, I my, my mouth dropped to the floor because at the time again this we were still in quite harsh bbfc times when this phone call happened and uh to me that was a no-go like oh, that'd be a sensor issue but he was really pushing me to do it so i actually did embark and i shot a super 8 film called revenge of the dead it actually ended up being a short because also what happened in the time of doing this tragedy struck vipco and the doors were closed and i was left with a short film which i screened again this when it was made film festivals weren't quite what they were for independent the, the real independent filmmakers what they are now it was a bit of a lost film and again i was thinking all about this and i thought do you know what i might 
see if I can track Michael Lee down because I knew quite a lot about Vipco from from knowing Michael for a period of time and I knew that Vipco was quite uh, mysterious to people, collectors loved it, but no one knew the full story. I know Michael was quite a, you know, larger than life character, but very, you know, there wasn't really any, any photos. He's never really been on, on, on camera really talking about it. There's very minimal um, stuff out there about it. So I thought that would be a cool, cool interesting uh, adventure to take. Um, so amazingly, I did actually find Michael. I tracked him down um, and he was really welcoming. I did arrange to do, uh, I arranged to go and see him and, and film an interview uh, with him, um, which I managed to to self-fund and had some help from, from family. And uh, it was quite interesting. I will say now, um, the environment which I had to do the interview wasn't easy because Michael, uh, bless him, was in a home and he had his own space, but he also used the community area and he, he wasn't overly forthcoming with staff that I was coming to to film an interview with him. So I, I smuggled a camera in and filmed it, guerrilla filmmaker style, which is what you know I do I used to do best. And I got a really interesting interview with him. He really didn't hold back. It was a, a an absolute like he he said things how they were and he absolutely just said it all and laid it on a plate. Now I was really excited about this. Um it was about 25 minutes or 30 minutes long where I had this raw interview uh so I was thinking what could I do with this it'd be great to to expand it to do a documentary because my idea was uh initially was just to get his story on camera but with the hope to expand it so I cut a early version together which was only a 30 minute film where I had an introduction had Michael's interview edited up better uh with some cutaways and just just a through a through a rough cut together to which actually ended up showing at Horror on Sea, uh, which was really cool. And that was in 2019, it would have been shown at Horror on Sea, um, January 2019. Uh, that was the first time it kind of been seen, um, which, uh, you know, and, and I had good feedback. It actually led to another festival screening um, at the Paris Cinema in Derby. Uh, which uh, I got invited to uh, submit and do it, and it was amazing. It, it, the, there's a story there because I actually hadn't finished a final cut. Uh, so when I went to South End on Sea, when I went to the Horror on Sea Festival, I had actually filmed the entirety, but I was editing it. But I had submitted, obviously, months before when the submissions were open, I'd submitted the uh, the first draft, just and then it got screened. I was able to announce there that there were some great contributors involved in this documentary and some great interviews and there was going to be more. Uh, so then when I got invited, I had to finish that. And that's a whole different story because my life was mad at that point. Um, but So going back, back to that first cut, because um, it was a long journey, um, I, um, I was definitely filming a lot of it throughout. 20, 2018 was the main time I was filming a lot of this. Um, so I did send the 30 minute cut around to see if there was interest. Um, and I heard from some of the distributors and the boutique labels and that there was a bit of interest, but you know, people didn't know where quite it was going to fit in. I thought it might fit in at one point with some of the 88 film releases because they were releasing zombie flesh eaters three and two, you know, the, the AKA zombie flesh eaters two and three. So I thought it might be able to to fit with those um and i did send it to arrow i did actually get a call from arrow video about this because what happened is um the negative had been found for spookies and michael lee was the producer of spookies he owned that film and they needed michael lee a signature approval to get the film out to be restored and and, and obviously do a deal with him for it to be released our video very keen on releasing spookies and um wanted me to help and and as, as in this documentary would be featured with it and i've helped find it because no one could find michael lee he was a ghost he disappeared but i had found him i knew where he was i knew how to get hold of him but uh and i went to a meeting uh with um arrow uh, my, with michael the all in attendance and um he was um he was interested, he was very excited, 
but because of the situation, his health declining and being in a home, it caused problems. Uh, there was a bit of a crafty because um, I then actually got contacted by vinegar syndrome and they were basically telling me they were ready just to get permission from Michael, cut a deal and, and that, that was film would be out of the vault and, and be remastered and it was to them a hot title at the time they wanted it. And a long time had gone past. I, I had um, I had been editing. There had been another screening. I was going through a mad, um, chaotic period in life, and um, it all was a mess. And basically, so I was like, okay. I'd been waiting years to get this out there. I'd been working on it for years. I wanted it out there. So um, it was it was a good deal to me to uh, have my film released with a with a boutique label and to have Spookies like you know. Uh, me helping and being responsible for spook is uh getting a new audience you know getting rescued from obscurity from that actual vipco scream time collection dvd so i went down there spoke to michael michael was happy deal was signed and you know it came out um and then obviously uh vinegar syndrome sub licensed uh spook is to 101 uh films in the uk I was able to do a bit of a tweak of the documentary, like make it a bit different, make it an extended alternate version as a selling point. So it was not the same recycled one on Vinegar Syndrome. Managed to get that on the 101 release. So it was nice to be a part of both the American Vinegar Syndrome and the 101 Films UK release of Spookies with that. So it was. I was really excited for that. Um, it, it, it's just one of those crazy things that um, when I was doing the first cut for uh the the festival at paris cinema in derby at the quad um i'd unfortunately had a very hard time going through a, a dramatic split up from my wife uh which um was honestly worse than a soap opera and a drama film i could actually make a film about that split up and and, and people probably wouldn't believe me and think it's too far-fetched but i had a lot of, of drama and stress going on with a number of things and it took a lot of time from me. It it, it took a toll on my mental health. And um, I managed to just get a rough cut to screen, which was passable. I wasn't over happy with. It went down okay. And I was there to do Q&As. And I, I, it was nice. Obviously, I knew I could have made it better. And I had some feedback. But I was still working on it. And then my second chance came out. Vinegar Syndrome obviously had a deadline because they were releasing Spookies. And so I had to pull my finger out my butt. And, and again, um, the, the, this, this drama in my life went on for quite a period of, of, of time. Um, it's very in-depth. So again, I, I ended up scraping a cut together, which again, I think it was passable. Uh, I wished I could have done better. But to be fair, I had a bit of help, but it really was just me as a self-shooting independent filmmaker traveling the UK, um, supporting myself, filming it myself, editing it myself. It, uh, you know, I was doing a proper a Tommy Wiseau of the room on this. Um, although I'd made films and, 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 and can make a film. Some people would say I couldn't, but <laughs> I can make a film. Um, it was hard because um, I had a great guy called Mark McKenna. He actually managed to help set up some really good interviews um, that, you know, they, 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 they were great contributions to the documentary. It became just another independent venture for me. Again, <laughs> third time I was given a chance to do it. Um, 101, I, I sold it to them at in the in the sense that it'll be a different cut so you know it's, it can be cool I, can, I, I thought this is a chance for me to rework it and obviously that came with a deadline because they had a <laughs> they had a deadline where they had to get it out so again i sat up all night trying to rework it because time had run away with me drama still going on uh different this time i had a major issue with my house uh, there had been an absolute disaster the house was trashed and semi destroyed it had just been a bit of a disaster so i was sitting in a a, a room in my home with, the, with it all just disgraceful state and i was sat there sweating stressed all night working and again hopefully it's passable hopefully it's an improvement i feel like i could have done better i wanted to do better but again i just ah, i just wish time was against me although it took so long time was against me but it made it out well there is a version 
of it on here. And um, yeah, it's just really cool uh, if anyone wants to support it. Because um, as I say, I, I have been asked over the years, will it ever come out on its own? Because um, obviously I always say, you know, the Vinegar Syndrome Blu-ray was great, but... Uh, but for UK people, that was an import. Importing is expensive and hard sometimes. And then the 101 come out. I, I did get messages where people just wanted the documentary or didn't want to pay. You know, uh, although it was a pretty good bargain that the, the Spookies one. But I know not everyone's a fan of Spookies, um, and, and this documentary covers a little bit about it. But there was there's obviously a, 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 a much greater in depth. Uh, documentary about Spookies itself on the Spookies uh, sets, um, but this um, this has a little delve in but um no uh, i just you know that's a little bit of an overview story of my adventure in making vipco um it is something i am proud of though it's a bit of a legacy of mine now it's something i've got known for um i know it's not the greatest thing in the world but making this documentary meant a lot to me because i really did want to do it because as i've said vipco was a big part of um me discovering more video nasties and um it's just real nostalgic memories collecting film which i still do i spend way too much money on film and i'm surrounded by a collection um so it was great to uh you know it, it brought happy memories going down that that road and you know vipco to me was uh growing up was incredible i, I discovered the film suicide which is called suicide in the uk michael was great at changing names to films very much like distributors have been for me and um uh so i believe it's uh, known as finalcut.com but um suicide is what i know it as in the uk uh having the vipco release an independent german film which i found incredible i spoke to michael about this and he said it did really bad for him it actually put him off of releasing independent film and he kind of just stuck with the more known cult like Lucio Flucci with Joe Dato and Umberto Lenzi stuff. It's a shame because I, I actually found Suicide a real inspiration. Like um, it inspired uh, my film Homemade to the footage a little bit in, in the style it was done. I, I found it a very powerfully acted piece, a very well made piece. You know, it's not for everyone. Obviously, it's a dark uh, themed film and, you know, it is controversial to boo, but it was the rawness and, and the filmmaking and the, the independent style that just you know it, it grabbed me and, and and it spoke to me because you know it's like it's i just appreciate the attitude of they've gone out and made a film it was almost a bit like a dog me 95 film to be quite honest which i, I i'm quite a fan of and because again the, the 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 go out there and make a film attitude i love and, and it reminded me of that but i had some great discoveries um even though they were cut to hell by the bbfc and, and they had the butchered versions and they're horrible masters and you know but that's all part of the fun looking back at those really bad masters cut movies and you know i still have a lot of my vipco dvds knocking around even videos but you know uh uh, DVDs are stacked over there of of, of Vipco films, and, it, and it's just a, they they take pride in my collection still. Even the even the the cheap Screen Time collection with the black case and gold writing that Michael told me was just purely, you know, it was cheap and easy to do, and people would buy it. Voila, you know, <laughs> the, the words of Michael. So um, yeah, it was it was a great journey though. I I really was up against it but it's not an excuse it's just um you know i'm glad i got there because um with as with all filmmakers um there were times i was just wondering will i get a complete film will it see the light of day thankfully it did so thanks for everyone for the support over the years on this documentary whether it's been coming to screening reaching out to me picking up any of the releases and the comments i've had you know you're, you're amazing and uh, a heads up that there is another release of it out there in the world. So thank you all.